I want to give you a more advanced maneuver today um, to help you get better at uh, turning your copter. Uh, you could argue that there's only two things you ever do with your copter. One is control your altitude with your throttle, and the other is turn the copter, right? Uh, that's Well, I guess the third thing would be control your speed, right? Speed, altitude, and, uh, and, and I guess your velocity, your direction vector. Those are the three things you can do, and if you master those, you've mastered your copter, right? So this is a good exercise for getting better at, at the turning part. And we've talked about how turning involves both yaw and roll. Yaw by itself does not change the direction you're moving. It only changes the direction you're facing. And that roll and yaw together create coordinated turn. But you can vary the amount of roll and yaw you put into your turns to affect, to, to, to do different kinds of turns, right? We talked about how if you perfectly coordinate the turn, you'll get a flat turn. And if you put a little more roll in, the horizon turns into it. If you put a little less roll in, the horizon turns out of it, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at some examples of that, and then I'm going to give you an exercise you can do. Um, before we do that, though, I do want to let you know I'm still using the default settings, but I've increased my throttle to 100%. And I'm going to leave the up tilt at the default of 24 degrees. But I find this exercise a little harder to do at this amount of up tilt because I prefer to do this exercise with a little bit more speed. Uh, if you're just starting out, you may you may prefer it a little more conservative. It's your call to make. If you feel like adding some more up tilt, though, uh, you certainly go right ahead. Uh, I also do want to say that if if you've literally been flying for you know if you've done these lessons and you've just got to this point, you may find this a little challenging. This may be more an exercise for more of the intermediate pilots. Give it a try. See how, you know, it can't hurt anything, can't break anything. It's a simulator, right? But uh, but if you find this a little bit challenging as a, as a, a new pilot, uh, that's not, that's kind of not unexpected. All right, so let's just recap for a minute here. I take off, right, and I start flying forward. And if I put in just the right amount of yaw and roll together, I will get a flat turn. If I put a little more yaw and a roll in, rather, then I'll turn into it. Right now, I've got a turn turning into it. And of course, if I yaw without putting roll in, the horizon goes the other way. So the sort of stereotypical turn is one where we hold the horizon at a certain angle so as to maintain the trajectory of the turn, right? Directing the copter's thrust outwards to affect the desired arc, right? If I, if I do a, a flat turn where I keep the horizon level the whole time, the copter's thrust is basically being directed, well, it's not being directed outwards. I'm not really turning. I'm just kind of spinning in place. I may have some amount of forward pitch, so I may be slightly moving, but I'm mostly just spinning in place. And it's only when I tilt the horizon like that by rolling into the turn that I really start to make uh, more aggressive turns, right? I really start to do what you might call a turn, right? And if I, but you can really play with this, and I want to give you an example. So I'm going to do a kind of a turn that's a little different. So here's one way to turn into a uh, into one of these frames. So I'm doing a reasonably coordinated turn here, and I'll do another one here. I'm doing a reasonably coordinated turn. Oh, I'm crashing, I'm crashing. Let me try one more. <laughs> um, I'm doing a reasonably coordinated turn with pitch, oh, there we go, with raw, yaw and roll. Sorry, this copter doesn't fly quite like I'm used to, and I'm not quite used to it. There we go, a nice coordinated turn. Now let me show you something different. Let me do it again. So what I'm doing here is I'm flying over the picket, and I'm doing kind of a flat turn around 180. And dropping the throttle to fall over it. So again, coordinated turn. I'll sort of approach it from the side, and keep my yaw and my roll together to keep the horizon sort of, again, the coordinated turn is kind of like this, right, where the horizon sort of tilts into it. And what I'm doing is something different where I 
turn flat until I'm facing the other way, and then pitch forward to turn into it. And so what I'm going to do there is I'm going to have, with a flat turn, I'm going to adjust the amount of yaw and roll that I put into the turn to accomplish that. to keep the horizon reasonably flat while I'm doing it. See, when I do the coordinated turn, you see that the horizon is, is turned into it, the horizon is tilted to the side, but when I fly over it and do the flat turn, the horizon kind of stays flat. I'm using more yaw and less roll to affect a flat turn instead of using slightly more roll to do a sort of coordinated turn. I'm just going to keep giving you examples because I think this there's a coordinated turn. Do you see how the horizon is turned, is tilted over? And here is a flat turn. The flat turn I think is interesting. You wouldn't do the, you probably wouldn't do the flat turn like in a race because it's not actually the fastest turn. But I think it's interesting because here, for a minute, we're kind of floating backwards, and that's kind of cool if you're doing FPV acro flight. Like, coordinated turns, everybody expects coordinated turns, right? They, they kind of, oh, look, aren't I flying, right? Nobody, it's like, it's sort of very precise and in control and almost clinical, right? Whereas this, whoop, now I'm going backwards. That's kind of awesome. Yeah, I missed that one. So th this is the exercise I want to give you. I'm just going to keep doing examples of it. You can do various. You can go low and whip around. That was not great. Let me try another one. You can also go low and kind of whip around. I'm having a little trouble with my altitude control here. Again, I'm sorry. This is not this is not my copter. So you're doing a little more yaw and a little less roll. And if you're very clever, you can try and keep the picket in your camera as you go past it, yawing flat the whole time. Altitude control will be challenging here. Throttle management. Again, and... So this is not the most efficient or the fastest way to turn, but it is a cool and nice looking thing, especially if you're doing acro flight. And it gives you a good chance to practice managing the coordination of your turns with pitch and roll. I do want to say one more thing about that. You know, the fastest turn is a coordinated turn because in a coordinated turn, your thrust is directed as close as possible to uh, perpendicular to the arc of the turn and and therefore you accomplish the turn in the fastest and most efficient way possible assuming that the the arc of the turn itself is efficient and not is not is not wasting uh, energy but practically speaking a very tight turn like if you were doing a pylon race where you are uh, you're flying out to a pylon and then you're whipping around the pylon as fast as you can. Oops, bad. And then you're coming back, right? The the fastest turn, the coordinated turn uh, around those pylons would be very, very difficult for you to accomplish as a pilot. Because in order to do that, you would need to pitch way forward. You'd need to have the copter's nose tilted way down so that the, the back of the copter, the bottom of the copter was pushing almost or parallel to the ground, right? And zipping around, it'll be very hard to control that turn. So it is, if you watch uh, high-end racers, you will often see them doing turns similar to what we're describing in this video. They will approach the turn, a sharp turn anyway, they will whip around kind of flat and start off the next direction, right? They'll approach the turn, they'll whip, ah, it's very hard to do without enough up tilt and with, with these low rates, I apologize. They will approach the turn very fast. They will kind of flat turn around it, and the, there we go. That was that was half decent. And they'll accelerate off. They'll kind of flat turn around it and accelerate off the other direction. And the 
reason for that is, I'll try and give you one more, they'll approach the turn, and they'll kind of flat turn around it, and then accelerate off the other direction. As opposed to trying to do a coordinated turn like this, where they where they coordinate the pitch and roll. And the reason for that is that that flat turn, although it's less efficient, it does let them easily line up the turn and keep the turn visible throughout, right? So if I pitch forward to try to go way fast, I can barely see where I'm going. It's a little hard to control. I can't really see when I've, I can't see the picket very much, right? I'm kind of staring at the ground. Oh, oh, I missed it. So a lot of times the pilot will keep his nose up a little and watch the picket go by with a more of a flat turn, like kind of like that. That's an ex that's a exaggerated example, but and so if you watch uh, if you watch the higher end pilots, a lot of times they are doing a turn kind of like this, even even though a coordinated turn would technically be more efficient. You know, if a computer were flying the cop, the computer would do a coordinated turn, but a human does a better job doing a less efficient move that turns out to be faster. So these flat turns like this are not completely just for FPV acro. Watch some videos. Watch some race videos. Uh, of pilots, and anytime there is a really sharp uh, cut switchback, you may see them doing a turn kind of like this. Okay, that's uh, that's the exercise for today. Play with it, have fun, and as always, happy flying.